Yo, what's up, guys? What's up, guys? So, in the last couple of videos, we set up the uh, debt snowball method, which is basically just a list of all the debt that you have, the minimum payment, and whatever additional that you're going to pay off. I'm still going to wait. It's the end of the month now. It's June 30th, but I'm just going to wait on looking at what my cash flow is so I can see how much additional I would want to automatically put into this credit card payment here. So... We're waiting on that. I impulsively paid this one off. We talked about that in the last video. I added this just to keep track of what changes happen and why they happen. So this is when we're starting. It's the last day of June. June is over now. Initial debt-free date that I calculated first was January 2022, quite a ways off. But uh, after impulsively paying off my Chase Freedom card, now that moved my debt-free date up by two months. I'm sure there's gonna be more adjustments to this. I'm almost positive that one is coming very, very, very soon. I was looking at this and before we get into making the emergency fund or anything like that, I want to save a thousand dollars today, right away, okay? And I was, and one of the things that I got to do also with this card, Chase Sapphire Reserve card and the Amex card here, is I got to stop using them completely because of what we talked about in the last video. So I was looking at this, and by the way, um, kind of as I, I I've kind of been adding things as I remember to uh, to this list because there are some things that that I don't didn't add in the beginning, and I just think of them as time goes on. So I've just been adding them as I as they come to my mind. So on the Chase Sapphire Reserve card, right? There's a lot of expenses that I'm going to want to change either cancel or move to a different card um, because I don't want to keep, it's not productive to keep using the card as I'm, as I'm trying to pay it off, right? The uh, Hilton Honor Surpass card, I don't have anything reoccurring there. There's nothing going there every month. So me putting it in the drawer, what did I say, drawer? <laughs> me putting it in the drawer right here is enough like that's going to be just fine. And the other thing that I want to do is is save $1000 right now. Um I remember doing this and I want to do this again with you guys. I remember doing this this is a challenge from Ramit Sethi. I will teach you to be rich. Uh he runs the site I teach you to be rich. I will teach you to be rich. And he does teach you to be rich too. He does both. So I teach you to be rich and he will. He will, I will teach you to be rich. I did this four years ago, this thousand, save a thousand dollars challenge and I tried to get some of my friends to do it with me and literally nobody else would do it with me. So I just ended up doing it by myself. So that was fun. But we're gonna do it again today and see how much we can save. Um, the goal is gonna be to save a thousand dollars. And before we get up to setting up the emergency fund, and it's going to be nice because when we get to setting up the emergency fund, it's like, okay, we've now found the money to put into the emergency fund, or at least some of it. Okay. So well, that's what we're going to do today. So first, let's just go ahead and uh, I'm going to kind of make a new list of all these things here. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to be posting some interesting stuff. I'll probably post some things on Instagram. Um, cash flow statements, financial statements, income statements, net worth statements. I don't know. I see people posting things on Instagram. And I kind of want to do the same thing. So that's coming. Uh, if you haven't followed me yet, my username on Instagram is instaguy79, which I'm probably going to change at some point to be more relevant to this stuff. But anyway, let's do uh, let's do this right here. I'm going to create a new sheet called Save One Thousand Dollars Today. It's like one of those commercials. Hey, save money by buying this thing today. You will save it. All right. So we're going to put the name of the thing, how it's charged, the amount, and that's what we'll start with right now. So first thing is. I'm just going to basically make a copy of this here uh, and bring it onto that Excel spreadsheet. A few moments later. All right, so these are pretty much all the subscriptions that I have. 
There's some that I didn't include, like I didn't include rent, didn't include fast track, I barely go across the bridge, and car insurance I pay manually actually, it's just that this card is stored in there, and HelloFresh is also like, or my card is just stored in there, it's not something that I, that I, uh, that's a subscription, okay? So what I'm gonna do here is, well, I'm gonna first see if there's anything else that I'm gonna add to this list. So let's go ahead and read this. Let's go ahead and read this. So this is how to save a $1,000 a month, no frugality, stupid tips, some stuff about how Americans suck at saving money. All right, so we're gonna look at start saving. So here we get some advice action items that we can maybe go do. Cut unused subscriptions. Save 60 to $600 from cutting these costs. I guess we gotta click it to find out. Wave bank fees. Save $420 per year on your phone bill and insurance. Hidden discounts. Shop faster and smarter. All right, so let's see what, what we can get. I don't really remember what this whole deal was, but I do remember that I was able to save maybe 700 or $800 in one go here. When I say save, well, when I'm saying I save a thousand dollars here in a month, it doesn't mean that I'm going to end up, you know, at the end of this exercise, I'm going to end up with a thousand dollars in my hand. No, it just means this is a thousand dollars that I'm not going to spend on other things. Canceling a subscription, for example, ten dollars a month saves you a hundred dollars or so in a year, right? So set a time aside automatically. Da da da. Spend an hour each day to read the lessons. Well, I'm not going to do that. Start thinking about what you'll do with the extra money. Yep. Uh, putting it towards my emergency fund for now. And then paying off debt. This is all about motivation. You got to have the motivation to do things. You got to have the motivation to get up in the morning. You got to have the motivation for all these things. Motivation sells. Hold yourself accountable. Okay. All right. Yep. Okay. So here we go. Cut unused subscriptions and free up 240 plus dollars. So, 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 um, all the subscriptions that I have, I, I pretty much listed in this list, right? And so, here they are. Um, all right. I don't have any cable. I don't have Netflix. I don't have any TV accounts. I don't have Spotify. I actually cut that a while ago as a symbolic gesture. Yeah. Okay, we're looking for cell phone subscriptions. I got that. Landline telephones. I don't have that. Cable internet. I don't have that. I don't have any of these. I don't have any of these. Software subscriptions. All the ones I know about I added there. Don't have any of these. Don't have any of these. Don't have that. Okay, so mentally multiply each subscription's monthly cost by $10. So since we're doing it on Excel, might as well do this now. So I'm going to make a column for yearly amount. So if I'm going to do it the non-scalable way. So if it's yearly, it's just going to be that. Uh, I'm going to do it the scalable way. All right, so if it's yearly, we just take that. Otherwise, we take the multiple times 12, except for this. This is every six months, so this is just $1,000. That's right, that's right, that's right. Oh, this is monthly. Uh, that's right, 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 and that's right. All right, cool, so now we got that. Now what do we want to do, Ramit? So for each one of these, um, we asked, do I actually use this and like it? Okay, use and like. Annual fee. Well, I use it, but I don't use the card. But I like it. It's a good card. But I don't really need it. But since I have to pay it off, I have to keep it open. So that's going to be a yes. Do I use this? Yes. Do I like it? Yes. Health share, do I use it? No. Do I like it? No. Do I need it? So, like I kind of mentioned before, the only reason that I have health, anything health insurance related is in case I have a medical emergency, like I need to use an ambulance or my arm gets chopped off or I get hit in the head with a golf ball or something where I have really no other choice but to go into the to the hospital. 
It's been a while since I have checked and seen what other health shares are available. So this is something that I'm going to look into more. I'm going to put a column here. I'm going to call it savable or I'm going to put new cost. So there's there's probably something better, cheaper, that I can get the same exact thing. Because I never use it. I don't go to the doctor. If I get sick, I don't I don't run to ask them what I would do. So really the only reason that I have this thing is for some big medical emergency. And so far I've had none. But that doesn't mean that I'm not going to have one tomorrow. Car insurance, use it and like it. Well, I never use it and I don't like it. So no. And I am planning on, on selling my car. So... I'm going to put the new cost there at zero. All right, so we've saved $1,000, guys. Thanks for watching this video. I will see you again next time. <laughs> All right, just kidding. Let's go on. Okay, Northwest Registered Agent. I use this to register my company name. Do I use it? Well, I used it once. Do I need it? I don't know. Probably not. I don't know what they do. I'm going to look into that. I'm going to look into that and see because that might be something that I can cancel. Do I use it? No. And do I like it? No. So I put in all my details in there and I've been getting a lot of messages from them saying, hey, you should check this out. But every time it's been some kind of thing that I don't have to worry about. And what I mean by that is I, so Xander is an ID theft solution. And what they do is monitor your the, the, the web, the dark web and your credit report for activity. And then they alert you to it. For the year I've had it, the only alerts that I've gotten are compromised credentials on other sites. But I haven't had to take any single action because I use different passwords on all my sites and I don't co-mingle credentials. So it's kind of useless to me in that sense. Although I get that it's more of an insurance product and should I encounter identity theft at some point in my life, then it would be it might be useful to have it. But I don't know. I don't I feel like I feel like if you are organized, like kind of the what we're doing here, right? If you have a list of all your accounts and you're tracking every single expense that you have and you're checking your credit reports, all that stuff we've already covered in this series and I feel like you don't really need it. So I'm probably, I think I'm going to go cancel that. So the new cost of that is going to be zero. All right, so this platform fee is something that I have to keep paying because it's a it's an errors and omissions insurance for my insurance license, right? So I I don't use it, I don't like it, but it's like same thing as the health insurance thing, right? So yeah, okay, Google storage, yep, I use it. Here's a YouTube result. <laughs> what? I didn't say okay, Google. Relax. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, I use the Google storage. I use LastPass. That's a no-brainer. Google domains. So I have a whole bunch of domains. <laughs> I don't use a lot of them, um, but I want to keep them. Like I have some domains that are my name. So I'm going to keep them. A couple of months ago, I went in and kind of removed the auto renew of the domains that I didn't like or didn't want anymore. But all the ones that I have there, so I know that that's not, that's not something I'm going to cancel. Google Suite, yep. That's uh, literally how you're watching these videos right now. I have a YouTube account that's linked up to my Google Suite account. Yeah, of course, I know it's not the same thing, but I got my custom domain and Gmail and everything on there. Annual fee, yearly. Well, I use this card, but... I use this card and I like this card. I don't know. I'm okay with paying this annual fee. I use it and I like it. I use this as my main grocery card, really. Yep. That's a no-brainer. That's cell coverage. This is a no I don't use this and like I'm just kidding. I use it and like it. Do I use it? No. Do I like it? Yes. I don't know. I mean, this is kind of like a future planning kind of thing. Um, I technically don't really need it. When we get into the part where we're going to look at insurance later on in a future section, we'll kind of see that I don't really need it right now. Like there's no reason for me to have this. So I'm going to investigate this a little bit more and see if that's something that I want to keep for now or whatever. I'm going to do some investigation on that. So this is a VPN, private internet access. Yep, I'm going to keep that. It's also a no-brainer. I have it on right now, actually. So, so far, there's two things that I'm going to cut, which is the car insurance and Xander ID theft. So yearly, I'm saving $1,075 already. 
Now for the health share, I'm going to investigate. There's probably going to be something that's cheaper. This uh, probably, I don't know what they do other than file paperwork. It was nice to have them do it for the articles of formation and that kind of thing, but I don't know that I need that anymore because it seems pretty simple. It seems honestly pretty simple stuff to just do. What do I got to do? Statements of information in two years. Okay. So probably not going to keep that. So if we add that in, that's another $129. And then investigating this as well, that would be another $400 if I decide to, to not keep it. Because honestly, I don't really need it right now. But it is one of those like future planning. Okay, so let's see what else does Ramit say do you want us to do. Does this save time or energy or make me money? Oh, so I kind of answered all these questions already here for all the other ones. Um, is there a cheaper alternative that'll work the same? For this one, there's going to be a cheaper alternative. For this one, probably, yeah, you know, probably not going to keep it. So is there a cheaper alternative for any of these ones? No? Uh, yeah, probably, but I'm not, not worth it. Last pass, probably, but I'm not, not worth it. N no, yeah, yeah, I mean, I could cancel this. I could cancel this card, but I like the card. I don't know if there's a cheaper alternative for this good of a cell phone plan. Unlimited talk and text and two gigs of data on the AT&T network for 22 bucks. It's even cheaper than uh, Google Fi for that one. Uh, it's probably cheaper ones I can get, but this one, eh, all right. So that's good for that. Okay, so I have a list of subscriptions I don't use. What now? If you don't want it, just log into these sites one by one and click my account or something similar and then click cancel. Okay, so this I can't cancel right now because I got to sell the car first. This I can cancel right now. So I'm going to go do that. <laughs> Hello, Dave Ramsey. Da -da -da. Yeah, so see here are all the personal information monitoring alerts that I'm getting. Okay, let me just show you one of them. I got seven new ones. But these are all from 2019. What the heck is going on? Should be some from... Should be some from 2020. Okay, here's the latest one I got. Personal information monitoring. Okay. It compromised email address. So it, it found a string match on my email address and the password that goes along with it is this five digit password found with email address or something or other. So it's saying that I should consider changing the password to my email. That's because they found my credentials somewhere and they think that I might be using the same credentials for my email as I was using on that site, but that's not something that I'm doing. So I'm not gonna take any action. Now let's look at this one. All right, so I guess it does do the password string match, right? But so if that password was just five characters long, it's obviously not my password. If this password is eight, like nine characters long, that's obviously not my password. Oh, I don't really have to do anything with any of this stuff. So I don't know. I mean, the other things that they do is full service restoration, theft reimburses insurance. So it's really an insurance product. It's not really a, it's not really a monitoring product. It really is insurance. But I, you know, I feel like if you're organized anyway and keep track of things and pick them up quickly, plus your bank, you know, you're budgeting and every single transaction you make on existing credit cards, you'll capture. And if anything new opens up, you're going to see it on your credit report that you're checking every once in a while. So here we go. Cancel account. Proceed. As will be canceled after my current billing period is over if you have questions. All right, cool. So that's that. Um, what else? Nothing else. That's all I could do right now. What now, Ramit? What if I don't use a subscription but feel I should? I have a gym membership I didn't use because I thought paying it would force me to take action. Instead, wasting money only made me feel guiltier. Yep. There's no guilt in canceling and telling yourself this doesn't fit in my life right now. I'll come back to it later. That's true. All right. Slash your cable, internet, and banking costs. Um, I don't pay any of the uses that are included in my rent. I don't have cable. I'm going to skip this. Rate plans. I already have a pretty good rate plan. I don't really... So he goes over how to call your uh, companies, your service provider companies, and, you know, gives you a little script here that you can use to say, hey, um, I can't afford my cable. What can you do for me? I want to cancel because when you want to cancel something, then they're going to try and bend over backwards to keep you as a customer. Waive bank fees. Well, 
I wonder if we can raise the interest. I mean, not raise. I wonder if we can waive the interest pay payments that I'm paying on my Chase card. That would be interesting. We can call into that, maybe. Um, hmm. Yeah. So then there's other things. Car insurance, slash your phone bill, insurance and save. Already done that. Uh, da, da, da. This is a little bit... Um, kind of a what's it called when when your knife is already pretty sharp and you just gotta go and like you're trying to resharpen it more sort of what this is but I feel like if the first time I did this I found a lot more stuff like there was things that I was subscribed to that I didn't really know that I was subscribed to I wasn't aware of it and it was nice so I mean I encourage you to do this as well I'll put the link to this article down in the description and you can go through and read it. But I feel like um, just that little exercise is something that we, um, that we, that I mean, I think that's what I'm going to get my, I mean, I think that little exercise that we just did and kind of have already done with all this stuff is his uh, getting us there because he goes on to talk about like other perks with credit cards banks and these are all nice things to do this is cool stuff you know this is cool stuff so hmm, maybe I'll do it okay um, <laughs> use, a, use a checklist to get the best products at 5 to 60% off um it's kind of funny because Ramit's the guy that's like, he doesn't really care too much about cutting expenses, but he has a section about how you can save 5 to 50% on every purchase by, by basically looking for more deals. I, I feel like if you want something and you don't want to buy it new or something, you just go on Craigslist. Oh, there it is, Craigslist, whatever. Like, most of the stuff in my room, honestly, I got for free. I have a dresser right there, free. Found it on the on the street. My bed, uh, my mattress, got for free. <laughs> Found it on Craigslist. My uh, bed frame, free. Also found on mat on Craigslist. Uh, some of these tables that I got, also free. The only thing that I bought that I have in my room is in terms of furniture is a table and that uh where is it so disorientating and that thing right there that shelf from ikea <laughs> those are the things that i bought and i have a thing in my closet which are like shelves but yeah you can get stuff for free if you if you just look for it seek and you shall find this is the part which I really like. Buy quality when it matters and buy generic for the rest. There are some things, the best example of this that I can think of is shoes. Let me tell you a tale of two shoes. I bought some Allbirds about a year ago. Um, and they're already starting to fall apart. And they're at the point now where the bottom of the sole has like, it's starting to show wear and it's almost gonna get a hole. So if I walk in a puddle, then water is gonna come into my shoe. And get my socks wet and that's a that's a really annoying feeling those shoes cost about a hundred dollars if i <coughs> remember correctly and i don't really use them that much I, I haven't used them that much i have like three pairs of shoes that i rotate between so let's say that those shoes if i wore them every day they last for maybe six months and that's being very generous so that would be a hundred dollars every six months to buy a new pair of Allbirds if those were my main shoes. Now I I have another pair of shoes that I bought. They cost I think six or seven hundred dollars. They're a pair of boots, and every so often I have to go and get the sole repaired, which is maybe seventy dollars. But I can wear them a lot longer. Like the sole, I've had these shoes for I think three years now, and I've only had to had the sole repair once. Yeah, I mean they're also really comfortable shoes. They cost a lot more up front. But the overall maintenance of them, like the maintenance of that shoe is less frequent and less expensive than buying a new pair of Allbirds. So eventually they're going to cost less over the long run. And their, their quality is amazing. They're amazing quality shoes. So that's I really like this section here. 
right? Pay for quality where it matters. Don't skimp on stuff that you're gonna that you're gonna use in a big way. Okay, so there's other ways to save. Turn your thermostat down. Optimize your cell phone bill. There's a lot of good tips here, guys. I, if you haven't looked at uh, Ramit Sethi's blog or his website yet, uh, I recommend looking into it. He also has a lot of good courses and things that you can a, a lot of good free stuff. I think like 98 or 97 percent of the stuff is all is all free, and you can get massive benefit just by looking at the free stuff without having to buy any kind of courses. But if you do want to go to the next level and take very specific action, then you can buy one of his his courses. And they're good quality. They're really good quality courses. So that's it. Uh, that's it, guys. Um, actually, that's not it. So we did this. We found out that I can save about... Well, I'm going to come back to this in a later video and give you guys an update here. But um, the other thing that I'm going to do now, and I'm not going to show it, because I would have to just blank out a whole bunch of stuff, is that I'm going to go into each of these accounts and change the billing from this card to a different card. It doesn't really matter which one, because everything else is statement balance auto pay. Well, except for the surpass card. I'm not going to move it to there, right? But it doesn't matter what other card I move it to. Maybe I'll distribute it out a little bit to, to, to give each of the cards a little bit of, uh, what's it called? give each card some love. Okay, so that's it. That's all that I'm going to do. And uh, basically preparing this card to be paid down like uh, like a madman. Okay, all right. So that's it, guys. See you later. So I wanted to make a really quick update to this before I went in to start editing. Right after I filmed in the morning, uh, I went and did some research on this very particular expense. There's the health share expense. And I found a company, a, um, I don't know if it's a company or if it's an organization. I don't think it really matters, but there's this group called Zion Health Sharing, and it's a health sharing ministry. I found that they had a plan for non-smokers under age 30 for $103 a month. And I just went ahead and signed up for it. So the amount that I'm saving from you know, the one that I had before, was which, which was from Liberty HealthShare to Zion Health, is about $1,400. For, of course, the insurance, I'm, this is not, I'm not going to cancel it right now because I have to wait until I actually sell my car. But that's going away. Xander, we canceled. And this, I moved it to my business account system. Um, it's something I decided that I wanted to keep, but I just moved it over to the business account. So I have to do the investigation on on this, so that might be coming later on. All in all, in total, it looks like I've been able to save 25, 27, and that's a lot more than I was expecting to save going into this. And like I said, my, you know, my my spending is pretty. I feel like it's already pretty sharp. But hey, if I can find 2,500 dollars worth of savings in like an hour's exercise, then I'm sure that you can as well, and maybe you can find more than I can. And I want to show you another quick thing. As I was going through my, you know, looking at auto pays and I actually uh, found some other things that were added to the cards, like my Clipper account was on auto load and my Fast Track account was on auto load. It actually had about $100 on my Fast Track. And I used to cross the bridge a lot, so they upped the amount that they would auto load for me to like 90 bucks. Uh, but then I stopped going across the, the bridge very much, but that, that money was still there. So I thought, you know, well, what the heck, let me just ask them. So I spent about, I came into the chat at 3.34 p.m. and ended the chat at 3.48 p.m. And I got $57 out of that. At how much is that? 14 minutes of chatting on the phone. Now, the reason I show you this is is, well, one, yeah, $57 will make a difference in terms of paying off credit cards and eliminating debt. But you can find money in places where you least expect it. And this is not somewhere where I was thinking that I was going to find $57. I couldn't get the whole $100 out of there. They you know, had some policy, but I was able to get fifty-seven, thirteen dollars back. <laughs> so... And there's, there's other places where you pr can probably do this, and this is something where you least expect it. The kind of the point is, like, if you put your f mind in the frame of, okay, I'm going to go through and audit all of the expenses that I have, audit my subscriptions and see what I can cut back on, what am I using, what I don't like anymore, then you are going to find more 
things that you can save money on. Now, you, you can only do this to a certain extent, but the, the point of this is, is the same reason that we do the financial mirror. It's exactly the same reason. In a way, in a way it's exactly the same thing. Because you look at what you're, where your money is going, and then you ask yourself, oh, do I want this? Do I need it? Is it helping me? And if the answer is no to those questions, then you don't keep it. You get rid of it. You stop using it. So I think that's pretty cool. You know, 25, 27. Um, just from a couple hours of, of uh, work today. So I, I could talk a little bit about the health sharing thing, what it is, what it's all about. But there's, there's a lot of videos that I found on YouTube that were actually really good explanations, so I'll link them in there. Just really briefly, what health sharing is, is it's not insurance. I'm not going to try and explain the difference between health sharing and traditional insurance because I'm going to do a horrible job at it. And the videos that I found were really good, so I'm just going to link those in the description. But basically, a health share is really good for you if you're not dependent on the, the medical system. You barely use your insurance, and you rarely, if ever, see your doctor. Or like me, I don't even have a doctor. I don't My, my primary care physician, like, who is that? I don't have one. <laughs> um... So I'll just link to the videos. I'm not going to try and explain this, but basically I can just show you what my what they ask and what the quote is, right? Um, I look at the membership guidelines, but so this is what their whole purpose is. They're created with created with the same principles of other other proven medical cost sharing communities. They have reimagined the health sharing concept to make medical cost sharing more accessible, simplify the process and encourage healthy living. That's going to be a big thing with health shares. If it's not an outright requirement stated on the website or in the guidelines, it's going to be in terms of cost. Because if you're not healthy, if you're an unhealthy person, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. It's just it's going to cost you way much more to be on a health sharing plan than it will for traditional insurance. Because you're going to end up paying for a lot of stuff out of pocket. Um, if you have experienced or heard of medical cost sharing communities, which you now have, we invite you to take a closer look at Zion Health. Okay, so they 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 go into all this stuff and what they're all about. But the thing I want to show you is the the quote. It's very easy to sign up, and the reason that it's very easy to sign up is because with this thing, you're you're going to be responsible for most of your health costs. For me, like, okay, so there's the big three. There's medical, there's the dentist, and there's the eye doctor. I, if, if I go to the dentist, I might go once a year or once every two years. I'll just pay out of pocket. If I were to get dental insurance, three months worth of dental insurance would be the cost of one dentist visit for me. For the medical system, the last time I went to the doctor was, I think, in 2013, where I had to get a doctor to sign off on some health form so that I could get clearance to go study abroad. And vision, I, same thing as the dentist, I'll just pay out of pocket when I go because if I pay for the insurance, I'm going to be paying way more than I'm going to be end up spending when I just if I just pay out of pocket for the for the vision doctor. So age range. To ask you what mem what kind of membership you want to be, it's just me, and whether you use tobacco. It's more expensive if you use tobacco, all right? Pretty standard. Now they have this IUA option here. This is the equivalent of a deductible, almost the equivalent of a deductible in traditional health insurance. So you have options of a, a thousand, then you're paying 185 a month, 2,500, then you're paying 130, and 5,000, then you're paying 103 a month. I chose 5,000. My rate is 103 a month. This means that for any incident, and they break it up by incident. So if I get pneumonia or something, and then I get hit by a truck, then the pneumonia incidents, I'll have to pay $5,000 before this thing kicks in. For the truck incident, I would have to, you know, ambulance and surgery or whatever, I would have to pay $5,000 before this thing kicks in. So if they both happen on the same day, <laughs> then I would be out $10,000. Oh, you can't see the, that, the end of the slider there. But this is good for me because, because I mean, my, I, I barely spend anything on, on going to doctors or prescriptions. I don't have any prescriptions. And I don't know who my primary, I don't have a prim primary 
care physician. I'm very conscious about my health. So if there's anything that, that I'm going to need to go in for, it's going to be some big emergency that I, I couldn't have avoided anyway. Like it's going to be an ambulance ride in because I can't walk on my own or I can't get there on my own. I have something that I feel like I'm going to die tomorrow, whatever. So if that happens, you know, I'm happy paying this $5,000 before this thing kicks in for it. And uh, yeah, so that's all I'm going to say about that. I just wanted to share with you you guys that. But look at the results, man. That's pretty good. That's That's pretty nice. I like that. That's cool, huh? So again, I encourage you to do this on your own, on your own time. You're probably going to find uh, a lot of things that are surprising, right? It's, it's very similar to the financial mirror, but, um, you know, I didn't do a full year of financial mirror. If you did a full year of financial mirror, you're going to be way more prepared for this activity than I was. I only did three months. Still, the results are pretty good. All right, so that's all for this section. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.